From the boxing ring to your podcast station, here are the three guys that talk nothing but boxing, Ricky and Ricky and Juan. Welcome back to episode 52 of Boxing Talk. Your host today is Ricky, which is me. With me, I have Enrique. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up, Juan? What's up? What's up? Hey, so, guys... We're going to try to do YouTube. Last time I know we said that we we're going to go on YouTube, <laughs> but something happened, you know, as we told you guys, like we're learning with this stuff. So hopefully this time we will be on YouTube. So you get to see our precious faces. Okay, guys, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> so like I, like I mentioned, episode 52, guys, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty exciting, man. We, uh-huh. we hit the 50s again. Like I know we mentioned that before, but uh, it feels pretty cool. And now we're doing this, and I can see Kike Juan in real time. We're talking. We can have this <laughs> conversation live. It's pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool. But before we enter into the boxing, um, into the boxing units and, and you know the previews and the, you know the, the fight analyst, at uh, I, I, mean, I can't even talk the analyst. <laughs> And analyzing the fights that just happened this Saturday. I um, want to give you a quick reminder, guys. Boxing Talk Podcast on Instagram and Boxing Talk Pod on Twitter. Uh, Twitter is doing good, Juan. Uh, you want to give us an update on Twitter? Yeah, so we've been having a lot of followers. And uh, I believe it's mostly people from the UK, man. There's a lot of people from there. Um, the, like we said it before, UK people or the Brits, they like their boxing, man. They uh they, they they follow us. They like everything, um you know. Especially this weekend, we had a lot of traffic when with the Kelp Brook and uh, the yeah. Amir Khan, so a lot of people were following from their account. So that was pretty cool. I see. Yeah, uh, still... We got we got more downloads on our episode too because of this. Uh, I think it was mostly from the UK as well. That that fight was a lot bigger than I think a lot of people thought. Yeah, yeah. way way bigger. And then guys. Um, and we're going to be talking about, you know, Congress is broken a bit, but um, yeah, it's crazy. You know, like I said, uh, Compa, what, what, do, what are we under on YouTube? Boxing Talk? I think it's Box? just Boxing Talk, right, Juan? I'm not sure. I think it's yeah, just it's Boxing just bo- Talk. It should just be Boxing Talk because yeah. we had like a, a brand new one, but it was Boxing Talk podcast, but we already had that old one. So it should just be Boxing Talk. Yeah. Um, and if anything, we'll, we'll share links on our our pages whether it's twitter or instagram yeah yeah we'll, we'll do that thanks for that one yeah we'll update you guys on instagram on twitter whatever you use best uh we'll love to keep you updated on that so guys let's get into con versus brooke what a fight and uh, before yeah. we even start man like uh there was so much drama before that the fight i was talking to enrique earlier about that how uh, how brooke uh, had to deal with a bunch of you know shit from Khan's team. I was uh, there was an interview from uh, Sky. What's it called Sky Sky, Sky, Sky Sports, I think, or Sky Box. Yeah, they they interviewed him. They interviewed him, and you know they were like, "Hey, I had to change my gloves last minute in the ring. I yeah. don't. We don't ever see that." Yeah, uh, so what happened there uh, is because uh, they threatened uh, Brooke with his purse money if he didn't. So that's why he changed his gloves. Also. Uh, Brooke stated that they messed with him when he was sleeping at three in the morning. Somebody went to go knock on his door. How yeah. crazy is that? That's why, uh, you know what? I'm glad we went with Brooke and I'm glad Brooke kicked his ass, man. We were saying it, guys, that Brooke was just naturally the bigger man and he showed it. He showed it in the ring. And honestly, guys, I mean, it, it, there's so many, we talk about it all the time. All the different factors that go into a fight matter. Amir Khan just did not look hungry anymore. It looked like he was just in it for a payday. He was already talking retirement before the fight. He was saying, once I beat him, I'm done. Kelbrook was doing this because he hated the dude, and he wants to uh, put a point out there that I'm still a top welterweight. Um, so I'm glad Brook uh, won and kicked his ass. He knocked him out in, what, the sixth round? Uh, it was a TKO. The ref just had seen enough. And, you know, we were texting each other on the side along with our our boy Max Orange, and we were like, hey, you know what? They need to stop this fight, and good thing they did. What did you think, Juan? Man, like you said, uh, he wasn't hungry anymore. Khan looked like he was just getting his ass beat out there. I saw the fight. Should it could have ended way earlier because, honestly, I did see a whole bunch of, like, different shit um, that that I thought was like, hey, just fucking end the fight. This was going to end up, like, dying in the ring or something. And, like, Canelo Khan 
situation. Um, but you know, Brooke looked good. He looked really good for, he looked really good. for he just, uh, having that layoff too. He just too. kept walking down Khan, man. Like Khan was a little yeah. kid. He was just bullying him. It was it was, at the first two rounds. Okay, we're competitive. From the third round on, it was just it was the Brooke show, and Brooke just walked him down, man. He just bullied him. So it was a good yeah. fight. So, I, I like that so just, one. Yeah, so just a quick, you know, like uh, my, my guys are stating, you know, Brooke wins via six-round TKO, so he improves his records to 40, uh, 43, and 28 KOs. Uh, so like they were stating, you know, they, they, Brooke performed well. And I'm glad you touched that on, on Khan Kompa. He did say that in that interview. He stated, um, he stated, it is, it is, I'm leaning towards the end of my career. Um, and that the love of boxing is not there like it was before. So he's going to talk to his family and his team, and it's most likely he's most likely going to retire. Oh, for sure. After he was talking retirement before the fight, but I think after this dude retire, man. Amir Khan, and it's not to say that Amir Khan sucks because he could still beat a lot of guys. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think he could beat the top guys anymore, but he can definitely be a journeyman still and beat maybe some of these younger guys but dude you've already been a multi-division champion you've beat the best names in your era you were a top superstar in the uk you've got nothing more to prove man right off into the sunset enjoy your money enjoy your family uh yeah. he's got nothing to prove man so yeah if i were yeah. con dude just retire man for brooke though on the other end brooke has a lot of promise now in the future he's 35 already but hey man i'd like to see brooke against thurman that would be a and, good fight, I think. They both and, came back and, from long layoffs and 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 duke it out. And Brooke even stated there his motivation is his three daughters. You know, he yeah. wants to still be in the game for his daughters. So who knows? I want to see Brooke too. That would be a good fight, KK. Yeah. Oh heck yeah. So Brooke versus. I mean, the the welterweight division is stacked. I mean, he could go for one of the young guys, Jerron Ennis or Virgil Ortiz. I honestly think uh, Brooke could beat those guys. I know that's not popular. That's not what people want to hear. Uh, but Virgil Ortiz and Jerron Ennis are still developing, guys. They're still very early in their careers. Um, yeah. They haven't – I mean, Ortiz tested himself with Kavliaskis. That was a good fight. Jerron Ennis with the Sergey Lipinets, but Lipinets was is really a 140-pounder. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think Brooke can beat those younger guys still. Um, but I'd like to see him against uh, uh, Mikey Garcia, uh, Keith Thurman, Maybe he could take good. on one of the champs again. Uh, he could take on the winner of Spence Ugas or a rematch with Crawford. But I don't think uh, Brooke can beat the champions, but I think he can definitely hang in there with some of these top contenders. With the big boys. What, do you, what about you, Juan? What do you think? Man, uh, like Kike was saying, you know, Thurman would be a good fight, but I still think Thurman yeah. is going to go for one of like the bigger names. He's going to try to go for one of the champs. We'll see if he gets it. But I would like to see, you know, him go against one of the younger guys, like Kike was mentioning. Maybe a Virgil Ortiz. That's a good opportunity mm. for Virgil to test his waters since he already versed Crawford yeah. and be like, you know what? You know, this is why I deserve a title shot now. Or, yeah. you know, depending on his uh, bout coming up. So mm-hmm. you never know if, if some of these welterweights that are champs right now move up in weight because Crawford has talked about moving up to 154 one day. Um you know, Spence has talked about moving 154 one day. That leaves a belt open for him in the future, maybe. Or you never know. What if uh, Brooke moves up? He's Because he's fought as high as middleweight before. He's fought Triple G at 160 before. He was campaigning at 154 um, before this fight. <clears throat> Actually, before the Crawford fight, he was fighting at 154, and then he went back down. Uh, but the dude, he's he's a big welterweight. The dude's shredded, man. Like Max yeah, Warren said, shredded, it seems like the man. guy never eaten a french fry. <laughs> um, the guy is, is, is shredded, man, and uh, I think he gives a lot of people problems still. He's a big welterweight. Um, we'll see, man. We'll see what the future holds. I mean, even the young uh, the young welterweight, Connor Ben, called him out. I think he could beat Connor Ben. Connor Ben is still one of those guys. Yeah, he's an exciting young contender like Virgil Ortiz and Jerron Ennis, but he's still, he's still unproven, man. Uh, he got a good win against Chris Algieri, but granted, an old Chris Algieri, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Yeah. See what, we'll see Brooke, what happens. Uh, has more in store. Yeah, I'd like Brooke. to see more of them for sure. Oh yeah, definitely, Brooke. And with Con, well, we, we we touched on Con, and maybe he will retire. But I'm excited to see Brooke. Uh, so, with that, guys, let's move into the Mungia versus Baller fight. Mungia's homecoming. But you know, we I think we all expected Mungia to win on this one. Oh yeah, 
So Definitely. what did you yeah, think about that? Was... Go ahead, Juan. Yeah, it was expected from to win, but man, that guy, I was looking shaky since the day before and he was already fainting. I was like, <laughs> yes. This Remember you brought that up out. on dude, he wasn't gonna yeah. faint. It's on YouTube, guys, if you guys want to see it at the way and he was he was gonna faint. Mungia. What did he say after Honestly, the fight too? He said that it wasn't him fainting. What he said something it wasn't I just want to clear something up. It wasn't me fainting. I just needed time to breathe and stuff. It was like, bro, that's called that you were about to faint. Like <laughs> you were fainting. So I don't know. Yeah. But let's talk about the fight guys, Mungia. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy because we almost not forgot about the fight, but it got overlooked because of the the big uh con versus brook fanfare. Uh, but Munguia, you know, was on the zone in his hometown of Tijuana. Um, wins by third round TKO against an undefeated Balor. Like you guys said, we expected this. Munguia, again, is looking good against these guys that he's supposed to look good against. But it's like he's good, guys, but we don't know how truly good he is. Because to me, he has yet to face a top 160 pounder so yeah, that that goes to question. Do you guys think he's still he's ready for a champion or take on the legit top contender instead of these? I mean, Ballard wasn't even ranked, guys. Ballard's not even ranked, regardless of him being undefeated. So, well, DK, how, I, I is, do. I, is Mungia really good? I I did see that he's improving, and by that I mean he's he was displaying head movement, something that he didn't display yeah. before. So he was, you know, he's learning, he's, you know, he's adapting, he's learning new skills because I think that was really, it's imperative for him to have th- that type of head movement like he was displaying. I know it's, it's it was against Baller, which not nothing, not talking bad about him, but, you know, maybe if he continues to do that, maybe we can see him with the, with the, with the top, you know, contender. Yeah. I mean, to me, he should have taken on that Derevianchenko fight because remember they, uh, <laughs> they had a, uh, one of the organizations mandated that fight, like that Derevianchenko versus Munguia. And derevianchenko has been in there with some top dogs. So if he would have taken that fight and see how he looked with him, I'd be more convinced. I know everybody's on the Munguia hype train, and it's not to say we dislike him, guys. We love Munguia. We love how he fights. He's a warrior. He gets in there. He handles business. And, and it's probably not him. It's his promoters that are giving him these fighters. I'm sure Munguia wants to test himself against the champions. He's been calling out Triple G. He's been mm-hmm. calling out Charlo. He's been calling out Andrade. Uh, he wants the top guys. But uh, his, the way De La Hoya works, man, he likes to hold his superstars back a bit and slowly progress them. Because right now, Munguia is 39-0, and 0, guys. 31 knockouts mm-hmm. now. He's he's reaching that that... That 15-0 of Floyd Mayweather, but dude, against these kind of fighters, it's like, come on, you gotta, you gotta start fighting some top dogs. No, I, I agree with you. You know, uh, I, I agree with you, Kike. But I, I do, I, I like the performance. Obviously, you know, I think that that uh, that left hook to the body set up everything up for Mungia, you know, and uh, and got him because he did that he, win. prior to the knock the TKO. He knocked him down once. No, yeah, he knocked him down. Uh, yeah, and I think so. I believe back, so. Uh, uh, and then that's when the TKO happened. It was the third that's, round. It, yes. That's when that brutal uh, punch happened, got knocked down, and then. Oh, uh, dude, yeah, that was crazy. He got up, and then, yeah. Ref, Do you think ref the ref, you, you think the ref, yeah. I think the ref did a good job stopping that fight because we saw um, he, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he lost his mouthpiece. And yeah. um, and, and that's when the ref yeah, was like, his mouth just waved it. So his, who, his mouthpiece went flying out. Who do you guys want to see Mungia in there with next? I mean, he's got Eddie's Landi Lara, which I don't know what's happened to the guy. He's been in MIA since his fight in May of last year. Uh, you've got Carlos Adames, who defeated Derevianchenko. Um, he can fight Derevianchenko or Chris Eubank Jr. Those are some top guys. Or if he's ready, he thinks he's ready to test himself against a champion and the champions give him an opportunity. You've got Jamal Charlo. you got Demetrius Andrade. Or he can take on the winner of Triple G and and Murata. Who would you guys want to see him with? Mm, I don't think I want to see I him. Think I, I w- Go for it, Juancho. I think I would like to see him, uh, you know, with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Why not have Chris come out overseas and uh, get a shot with him? That so that would be a fight. really good fight. It would it would sell. Yeah. It would sell a lot. 
Because, like, Lara yeah. is good, but Lara, I think, gives them problems because Lara is a moving fighter. And yeah. a lot of the Mexican fighters, they're not used to fighting against guys that move around. That American, mm-hmm. Cuban style. Um, you know, the Mexican fighters, they love to come forward and just throw bombs. So I think Lara would pose problems to him. Eubank loves to stand in there toe-to-toe. He'll box you, too. Uh but when he's tested, he likes to test himself back and, and go for it. Adamas can pose problems too. Derevyanchenko, I think Munguia would handle Derevyanchenko pretty easily because Derevyanchenko just <coughs> comes forward. But I think uh, Munguia, he's, I mean, he's ranked number one for two organizations, ranked number two. So that means he's ready to challenge, right? It's like go for the titles then. But at the same time, like Ricky said, keep, keep growing. He's only, what, 25 years old? He's yeah, still yeah, young. He's- uh, I, but hey, we'll see, I man. I, I I'd like to see Munguia fight a contender first before challenging for a I, title. I think so too, because I don't want Munguia to take the Fernando Vargas route, you know, and rush himself. I want him to take it easy, yeah. keep learning, and you could climb to the top. But before well, we move on forward, guys, uh, yeah. what is up with uh, Baller using a blanket in between fights? I I was like, what? he's using a blanket. <laughs> I was thinking he bought well, one of those Mexican blankets and he really well, liked cause it. it was, <laughs> well, because it was like fifty something degrees. The the they were saying <clears> in the <throat> in the broadcast there, it was like yeah. fifty something degrees out there in Tijuana, and they were fighting outside in an outside stadium. So I think that's probably why they had the mm-hmm. blanket. That was funny though. That was yeah, funny. that was funny. I was like, what is he doing? I said, <laughs> I, it looked like my comforter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like one of the blankets that Juancho uses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was two exciting fights this weekend, guys. Uh, we're gonna get to the pre, uh, to the, the the ones that follow up for next Saturday. It's gonna be more exciting fights. But um, with with that being said, guys, let's move on to news. Uh, so a deal has been reached between WBC uh, Bridgeweight Champion Oscar Rivas and uh, Mandatory Challenger Evgen Romanov. What do you guys think about that? So this is mostly for. Oscar Rivas, guys, I think Colombian or Venezuelan fighter. Um, he's the new Bridgerweight champion, which is the new weight class that they're trying to implement, which is in between cruiserweight, and I think they want to top it out at the limit of 224, and they want to make the new the new quote-unquote super heavyweight from 225 pounds and up. Um, yeah. It's something the WPC is trying, so... We'll see how it works out. We'll see if the other organizations will hop on that train and, and create this bridge weight division. And like we talked about this long uh, long ago, it's called the bridge weight division because a kid with the last name of Bridger uh, saved his sister um, from a dog attack. So in mm. honor of that kid, um, you know, they, they named it after him, the bridge weight division. So we'll see. Really? I mean, Oscar Reba. Yeah. So that's, that's why they cool. named it. I didn't it. know that, Copa. Yeah, you gotta look it up, man. I think it was like a six-year-old kid. Yes, he yes. saved his like uh, four four-year-old uh, sister yeah. from a dog attack, and he got a he got like stitches yeah, all the way down his up. face. Yeah, so they yeah. named it after that kid. I forget. I'm sorry, I forget his first name, but I know his last name is Bridger, um, and oh. that's why they're naming it Bridger Weight Division. But we'll see. Oscar Rivas. Mm-hmm. It should be exciting. It's gonna be his first title defense. Like I said, right now the WBC is the only one using. The Bridgerweight division, so not a lot of people see it as a legit division right now. Uh, but we'll see. You never know. The other organizations, the IBF, WBO, WBA, maybe tag on because, like we've seen, guys, these heavyweights nowadays, man, we've even said it ourselves. They need to create a new division because these heavyweights are getting too big and it's almost unfair. Imagine facing a dude like Tyson Fury, who's six foot nine, 280 pounds, and then he He's facing a dude that's six foot three, two hundred. It's there's got to be like we always say, there's weight divisions for a reason. There's no reason why the organizations can't make a change here. Um, I mean, as humans, we we get bigger, faster, stronger as time evolves. We evolve, so we're evolving mm-hmm. now. We're seeing heavyweights bigger than they've ever been before. So yeah, why not implement this division? But yeah, I'd like to see Oscar Rivas fight. Hopefully, that fight gets announced soon. And we'll see where we get to watch it. Yeah, well, let's see. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted. Um, our listeners will keep you posted. Guys, I hate to bring this up again, but COVID. COVID has yep. entered boxing world again. Uh, <laughs> Myers Brady versus Jay Opetai, uh will be rescheduled three to four weeks from uh, April 6th because Brady is contracted COVID. 
Uh, so I know that COVID, we're going to have to learn to live with COVID. It's always going to uh, take effect on us in the future. So there you go. Another postponed fight because of COVID, it's, guys. It's crazy because we just announced this fight last episode. It literally just got announced. And literally the day after, it gets <clears throat> postponed. And three to four weeks, that's being, you know, that's that's saying that's pretty soon. I don't. I doubt it's going to happen in three to four weeks. Who, who yeah. knows if it's even going to happen now? Because you know what these fights sometimes, guys, they get scheduled, they get announced. Then as soon as they get canceled, for some reason, that fight doesn't get rescheduled. The guys go their own separate ways. But we'll see what happens or with this. choose other fights, yeah. Yeah, they choose other fights. I mean, I don't yeah. know, Juan, what do you think? Because I think this would have been a good test for Briatus, a young, hungry Australian fighter in Jay Pattaya would have given him a challenge, man. Yeah, like you said, it would have been an exciting fight. But now, honestly, um, I feel like it will get rescheduled. But I don't think in three to four weeks. It might take like two months, man. Yeah. It's not. It's not gonna happen yeah, within yeah, that exactly. one month. These fights, uh, especially perfect, Juan. Uh, these fights, like Juan <clears throat> says, to get rescheduled. Because guys, it's not just about saying, "Oh yeah, we're picking that." You have to. You have to. Uh, you know, pick the venue. Make sure it's available for that date. You have to pick the. You know people that are going to work that it, it's a whole production yeah, it's, it's a, a yeah, whole production it it's it takes months so that's why when these fights get rescheduled it takes two to three months man so we'll see yeah. we'll see we'll see what happens with uh, with that fight um uh so juan what did triple g post on instagram so triple g posted that he had begun his training camp and you know announcement should be coming soon that for Ooh. his uh, unification middleweight fight against murata um, and it's supposed to happen in uh, Japan, you know, in early April, which is exciting, man, because this is a fight that we've been waiting for for a while. So yeah, Finally, Triple he's G, entering man. camp because he was supposed to fight in December. <clears throat> but again, yeah. like Compa said, COVID has been affecting mm-hmm. a lot of different fights. Uh, this was one that got postponed because of COVID. Japan closed their doors to everybody pretty much. No foreigners mm-hmm. allowed to enter. Um Guys, right now in April, we have April 2nd as the only weekend uh, available right now. So who better than Triple G to take? That's probably why it hasn't gotten taken up because people know. In the boxing world, they know. Everybody talks, man. And April 2nd is the only weekend that hasn't been taken. He said it's going to happen early April. I mean, what earlier than that first weekend? So I think it might be April 2nd. That would be cool. Hopefully they get to announce it soon and hopefully it actually happens, man. I want triple we want to see triple g already he's going on what 15 months 15 yeah i was gonna ask that he last he last fought december 2020 wow so that's a we'll see if he's if he's getting he's already what 39 40 years old it's crazy i yeah yeah, with with that with that ricky you should uh plan ahead for april and you know since you're already going out there make sure you get get (laughs) imagine imagine i'll be dope (laughs) I get to go see uh, Triple G in Japan. That'd be, that'd be pretty that cool. That would be yeah. awesome. That would be cool. Yeah. But you know what? Right, right now, like, do, why even reschedule? Because like we said right now, man, everything changes. COVID is here to stay. And I don't know. It sucks, man. But uh, guys, Brian Castaño is in the news. And I'm really bummed out about this one, guys. I'm bummed too. So man. Brian Castaño suffered a minor uh, right bicep. Um, uh, he ripped his bicep. No, his right bicep, Papa. Yeah, sparring. some... some- Something, yeah, with the right biceps. I guess he was sparring. And, yeah, man, it's postponing so, the Charlo fight, man. Yeah, so it's going to postpone it. Uh, so it was set for March 19th. So, again, who knows if it's going to happen again or yeah. if it's going to be rescheduled. We don't know. We don't know what happens in the boxing world. And it sucks, too, because uh, it was going to happen here in L.A., man. Yeah, It was going to happen in yes. L.A. We were thinking of going um, – at least that. At least we can focus on going to the Virgil Ortiz fight now. <laughs> Where's that going to be? Them I mean, in LA? It's going to be in LA at the uh, Galen Center in USC, at USC oh, really? campus. Yeah. Oh, we so, should go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should go. And then you know, talking about going to fights, man, we're going to be like we said it last episode. This Saturday is going to be a big day for boxing talk. Uh-huh. First time with the uh, media passes. I know who hit us up. Oh, congratulating us. Was it Jorge Montes? Mm, yes yes yeah shout out for remote this thank you man thanks man yeah so that was pretty cool um so uh so we'll see we'll see what happens we'll keep you posted with that uh we're 
we're discussing how we're going to record this. So it should be an exciting thing. Stay tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with that said, uh, Jaron Boots, guys, Boots, Ennis, and Custio Clayton have reached a deal for an IBF title eliminator with the winner being the number one contender uh, to face the winner of Errol Spence Jr. Uh, and your Denis Ugas. So what do you guys think for that? So, like, this was another fight that we had mentioned our last episode, but there was just speculation at that time. Uh, they were saying it was most likely going to happen in April along with the Fundura versus Lubin fight. We still mm -hmm. don't know. It still uh, could happen because this fight's supposed to happen in the spring, which spring, I think, starts next month and doesn't end till June. So it can happen anytime between March and June. So April, um, obviously, within those dates. So it could, it could be that it's... Uh, on that April 9th card with Lubin and, and um, Fundura. So, you know, another exciting welterweight. This is a guy that gets compared to Virgil Ortiz a lot. They're young. They're exciting. They're knockout artists. Um, so excited to see Jerron Ennis against uh, another undefeated welterweight in Cusio Clayton, who's he's a beast, man. Canadian fighter. You don't really hear about too many Canadian fighters, but now you got, uh, I think, two. You got two good uh Canadian welterweights in Custio Clayton and Cody Crowley, right? Or is Crowley at 154? I forget, Juan. Do you remember if Crowley's at one? Uh, or is he one? Crowley is in the. No, I think he's at 154. I might believe be. that's what he came. Yeah, because he that, came that down from came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I really forget his division because I remember him. We were like, man, this guy has like is gonna freaking lose. Yeah. So <laughs> that he actually won. <laughs> yeah, dude. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with uh, Ennis. I, he should, he should be winning this fight, but we'll see, man. We'll see. Yeah, actually, we'll Crowley see is at the... Crowley is at one forty seven. He went down. Oh. He used oh, to be a one fifty. Yeah, he was a one fifty four pounder, and he's down mm -hmm. at welterweight. So now you got two top. Canadian welterweights in Crowley and Custio Clayton. Shikes. Cool. Yeah. Well, well, let's see what happens with that, and uh, we'll keep our listeners posted with that news. Uh, Juancho, what's going on with George Cambosos, dude? Oh, man, there's, there's a lot going on with this guy. Everyone wants him. So, yeah. <laughs> so with, uh, George Cambosos um, um, is slated to make his first defense of his title on J June 5th. So at the Marvel Stadium um, in Australia, man, that's going to be an epic, epic atmosphere to be yeah. at. Um, but, you know, his fight is expected to be against Vasily Lemachenko or Devin Haney. Um, right now, it looks more clear as a front runner for uh, Lemachenko because um, mm -hmm. obviously uh, Lemachenko is all about that. But Devin Haney is like Ricky would say, Twitter fingers. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, no. we don't we don't know what the heck's going on. Supposedly, Haney's making it sound like he's down for anything, but from what it's sounding like, it's seeming like Haney wants more money. We don't know. We don't know. It could be that Cambosis is ducking Haney, but Lomachenko, like Juan said, he's down for it. He's even willing to live down there for a little bit, um, you know, to get this fight. It's going to be a big fight in Australia. Them Australians love their fights too, man, and uh. June fifth oh. is that a Wednesday, guys? Would that be a Wednesday? <laughs> Remember Australians we talked are... about that. Hey, yeah, but we, so. we got we got we got clarification from our one of our uh, listeners and followers, uh, James Gorman. So shout yeah. out James for explaining that to us. So what exactly right. did he say? Compa? He said that the reason uh, they fight on Wednesdays is because the other days uh, is for rugby, oh, yes, the AFL, rugby. all of that. So obviously that's very popular in Australia. So Wednesday is really the only day that it gives boxing its shine. So that's why they set it up on Wednesdays. But for this, I think it's a Sunday out there, and it would be a Saturday for us that it's taking place, and, I think. Uh, and, and for, for a follower, uh, Gorman, uh, you gotta, we got to talk on the side about your guys' bugs, man. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> I see some uh, big-ass spiders, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be cool to go to Australia one day, man. Yeah, that would be cool. I don't know, man. I don't want to square up with the kangaroo, though. Those yeah. guys are buff. What's that one movie? <laughs> kangaroo, kangaroo Jack? Kangaroo or Jack. Kangaroo yeah. Jack. Yeah, so like <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'm excited for that. Whether he takes I'd, – I'd prefer for him to fight Haney, but the next best thing is Lomachenko. So the fact that yeah. George Kambosos is willing to, to talk to either, that's great. But we'll that's see. Dope, yeah. We'll see, man. Yeah, I mean we'll – Lomachenko has also agreed to give him a rematch, so yeah. there's a rematch clause in there. But it would be televised on ESPN, so you so know how uh, Cambosis is a the zone fighter. 
um, with Matchroom. So yeah. Well, I mean, technically, Cambosis is a free agent. I think he's been fighting on the zone uh, oh, really? recently. Yeah, because remember he was willing to fight for Triller, and then he was willing to fight oh, yeah. for the zone. You're right. Um, so You're he, right. he really can fight anywhere, but because you know Lomachenko's with Top Rank and Top Rank is under ESPN, yeah, it, it only makes sense. This is something that if it happens between Cambosis and Lomachenko. It probably will be on ESPN Plus. If it happens with Haney, it'll most likely be on the zone. Yeah. So we'll yeah, see. We'll keep we'll you. We'll, we'll keep you updated on that, guys. Um, and then um, again, Oscar Valdez versus Shakur Stevenson gets officially announced, guys. Uh, it got, got announced, announced this week. Uh, yep. Exciting. Finally, we we were hearing that. Oh, this person <clears throat> wasn't signing the contract. Oh, this person signed it, but this person hasn't. Finally, guys. It's got it's getting officially announced. That's why when we do these episodes, guys, we tell you not official because even though the media might be telling you, hey, this is going on. So and so signed. They both signed the contract. That does not mean it's going to happen yet. It's not until you hear the promoter or the networks announce it that it's official. So glad that it's official. Let's hope that COVID does not stop this fight. Oh, man. God, COVID yes. has been stopping so many fights, dude, or injuries yes. or. We talk about it all the time in boxing. It's like we crimes. We, we yeah, we, yeah, exactly. We <laughs> tell you about these fights, and then we just cross our fingers, hoping that they'll happen. Yeah. So, so let's see. see what happens. I'm excited about that fight. What do you think about that fight, Juan? Are you excited? I'm excited, but you know, fuck Valdez is gonna get his ass whipped, bro. Did yeah. you see uh, Valdez posted something about him like uh, drinking coffee? In the morning, and <laughs> Shakur Stevenson already starting with the trolling because he's all like, "Make sure your coffee's clean. We don't want another tea situation." Oh. <laughs> oh, really? Dude, uh, yeah, he said that, so uh, it was funny, man. He's all, "Make that's sure your crazy. coffee's clean. Make, we don't want another tea situation." So uh, the jabs <laughs> well, already starting see. at each other. It's gonna be a good fight. It's gonna be a good fight, yeah. uh, guys. Instagram has entered the news again. Instagram, yeah. uh, Jomel Harry makes hints at moving up to lightweight by posting on his Instagram. Um, what do you think about that, Kike? Hey, another guy that's moving up from 130 to 135. We just talked about Miguel Burchell, um yeah. announcing his, his 135 move up. Guys, this just adds more to the mix of the lightweights. The lightweight division is popping right now. You got guys yeah. like Garcia coming back. Teofimo Lopez, who was questionably undisputed but to us he was the unified champ now no longer lost to cambosis you got cambosis you got haney you got tank you got jamel herring coming up you got miguel burchelt coming up you got the guys like isaac cruz making a name for themselves you guys got got young guys like roly trying to get himself mm -hmm. in the mix there too the lightweight division yeah. is stacked so jamel herring just adds more to it uh we'll see he said he specifically put the date of may 14th so he might be fighting may 14th making his lightweight debut we'll see against who usually when guys move up in weight they tend to fight a guy that's not so known just to test themselves mm -hmm. in that division and then if they do well then they tend to take on uh bigger names especially a guy like jamel herring who who was an ex-champion he lost it to shakur stevenson which no shame in that stevenson is a once in a lifetime type talent i mean stevenson we've talked about he doesn't get talked about as much as the Fab Four, but he's gonna be he's gonna be a superstar, man. Um, so we'll see. Jamel Herring, I'm excited to see him move up because he he was another one of those guys big for the 130 division. I think he's what guys like one. He's like five foot ten, five foot eleven. He's a big dude. I think so. Yeah, so I think so. I'm excited to see him at 135. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. I'm excited goes. too. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how how, what, how it goes with him, uh, guys. Isaac Cruz, Isaac Pipo Cruz has entered the news. I, I like this kid. I want to see him again. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited um, for his for his. Uh, he's going to be set to face your your Gamboa uh, as the co-main event at the Arrow Spence Jr. versus Jordan and Spugas. What do you guys think? What do you think, Juan, about Isaac Cruz coming back? Man, Isaac Cruz is a guy that just came up against your boy Tank. Um, honestly, that fight was uh, a draw. Tank was by the struggling. way, struggling. That fight was a draw. <laughs> struggling. Yeah. He was a, he he was he was really struggling in that fight. He should have been doing better since he was a short, the taller guy in the fight for once. <laughs> <laughs> for real. So, <laughs> but you know, like like we said, uh, Gamboa, yeah, he. 
he's fought pretty good fighters, but he's yeah, always yeah. people slap these. He's seconds. on the latter he's part of his to... career now, dude. Mm-hmm. He's in his late thirties. Yeah. But here's the thing, guys. A... Here's the thing, Juan, and let me know what you think. This is why people are Ryan Garcia haters, dude. Because as when, remember when Garcia was was talking about he might fight Gamboa, everybody's like, "Oh, Garcia's trash! How dare he fight Gamboa? Gamboa, blah blah blah, this and that." But the fight gets announced with Pitbull Cruz, and everybody's like, yay, we get to see Cruz fight again. We get to see him fight against Gamboa. Come on, bro. Where are the standards there? For Garcia, you guys yeah. are booing him. But for Cruz, you guys are praising him. Come on now, guys. You guys got to be fair. I mean, Gamboa is oh. an ex-champion. He is. He has Late. experience. Yeah, but the fans, man, what the heck? Like, booing this guy, but then praising this guy for it. So, I mean, maybe, maybe, Cruz is... Maybe... <clears throat> Sorry, sorry, Copa. Maybe because they expect more from Ryan Garcia. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. Not a lot of pe- not a lot of people expect much from him because this, like, past the, I believe it was this weekend, I saw some some videos of uh, Isak talking shit about uh, Ryan, and oh, yeah. Isak oh, really <laughs> talking shit about Ryan. Yeah. And they're like, oh, he's not even gonna fight this next upcoming fight. Oh he's shit, pull out again. <laughs> and dude, if so he pulls like, out, man, oh no. What exactly? Does, so I'm like, oh, man, oh no, dude, that would be terrible. Where's Where's Roly in that mix where he should be calling out Tank again and getting that you know that fight? I think that I think that's too. I think that fight's gonna happen next one. I really think Roly versus Tank is gonna be next because oh the, uh, be the fight, what so, was it? Man. The WBA already ordered it, and I think that one is one that's uh, gonna happen because they're both from the same promotion, they're both under the same network. So I think it'll happen. I think that one will happen. And imagine next. it's here in LA. We got to go for that one for sure, dude. Because who knows if it'll be in LA again, though? Because Tank just fought at the uh, crypto.com arena. But uh, yeah, dude, it's we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. We'll keep you guys posted again. With everything that we, you know, we bring up to you guys here, we'll keep you posted. Just keep yeah. that in mind. Uh, let's move on to the next fights for this Saturday, guys. Uh, we got the, a lot of fights. A lot of fights, we got, guys. We. We, we got fights on what Saturday and Sunday, no compa? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, so we have Guillermo Regendal versus Vincent Astrolobio. Mm-hmm. This is a bantamweight. Uh, bantamweight for you guys that don't know, it's 118 pounds fight. Uh, this is going to take place in Dubai, Marina, uh, at the Dubai United Ar- Arab Emirate, Emirates, Emirates, yes. United Arab Emirates. Um, Emirates. So it's going to be taking place, like I stated, on Saturday, February 26. It's not going to be televised, guys. Uh, so you might your best bet is to find it on YouTube afterwards. So Guillermo El Chacal Rigendal, uh, he is ranked by the WBC at number nine. He is twenty wins, two losses with thirteen KOs. He is five seven. He's forty one, so he's pretty up there in Jeez, age. And he's man. pretty slow, as we noticed, as we saw him <laughs> in the last fight. Yeah. Uh, so he lost. Fought, his last <laughs> fight happened with against John Riel Casimero. Unfortunately, he, um, we were there live with that one. The most boring fight oh, of all time. Oh, we were, man. Jeez, yes. I know we mentioned this in the past. It was so boring. Yeah. Uh, I literally was yawning, and I don't really want to <laughs> yawn in boxing matches. Uh, so he lost. It happened in August. Uh, so he's been having a six-month layoff, guys. Yeah. So his notable opponents comes to you from, like, Rico Ramos. He beat him. Uh, Nonito Donaire. Uh, yeah. He won by unanimous decision. Joseph. Act Beko, yeah. uh, Vasil Lomachenko. Which other yeah. ones, Copa? Liborio uh, Solis, and then obviously now uh, John Real Casimero. So he has a pretty yes. good uh, resume. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't get televised. Well, for some, like, uh, I think, uh, what was it? Tome Blanco on our IG commented on our post today. He's all like, <laughs> I'm not even going to watch this fight. Good thing it's not <laughs> televised because... He's all like, I, I like Rigandau, but the way he fought last time makes me not want to watch him. And uh, Rigandau probably lost a lot of – he probably lost a lot of fans the way he fought last time. But, uh, no, hey, he regardless, guys, <clears throat> he's still a top guy. Um, we're just glad to see him back fighting a Filipino fighter and Vincent As- Acero, Astrolabio, which mm-hmm. I think Acero in uh, Tagalog and also in Spanish means steel. So he's oh, ranked number so 10 is. in the WBO. Um, he's got 16 victories, three defeats, 12 knockouts. He's an orthodox fighter, five foot five. So Rigandau has the advantage there. He's only 24 though. So geez, that's a 17 year difference. That's like Juan fighting a 38 year old. Um, 
or like me and you, compa, fighting like a guy in his late forties. Um, yeah. But his last <laughs> his last fight is, was against a guy named Jerry Pavila, which he won by first round TKO, and he's coming off a, a year layoff. So the only top guy he's fought is the guy he's or not fought, but the only top guy now is Guillermo Rigondeau. So Astrolabio Young, twenty four, but this is his first true test. So we'll see how he does against uh, a Rigondeau. Yeah, and then another Filipino. Rigondeau's facing another Filipino. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, so, so we'll, we'll see, see what happens. So we have age. We have experience versus with young, you know, age. Yeah. So we'll see That's what happens That's the thing that, that worries me with uh, Rigondeau, man, is he's already 41. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, like we were saying, this is going to take place in Dubai. Uh, of the five fights we're previewing, this is the only one that's not going to be televised. Uh, which some of you might not even care because, you know, it's Rigondeaux. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll see. I, I got Rigondeaux, guys, even though he's already 41. He needs to retire, dude. He's not going to be a you champion got, anymore. I don't think so. You got Rigondeaux, Copa? I got Rigondeaux. I think, uh, uh. I think he'll be a, he'll press the issue more. I think he was he was dancing around Casimero because he was, he was scared of Casimero's power. But... Uh, I think he should win this fight fairly easy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about you, Juancho? Um, I think I got Reagan out too, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm what thinking, man. Like, fuck. Shit. Uh, this is not easy because, yeah, Reagan out came off of a loss, not so great performance, and he's old already, man. He's 41. Like yeah, you, you said, know what? I'm Cuban a- fighters, they fight till they're old, man. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go based on experience and go Regan Dow Copa because he has more experience. So yeah. Regan Dow is so for the viewers. Regan Dow it is. Yeah, Regan Dow. Hopefully, it's not as boring as the last one, man. Jesus. Yeah, we'll see. So the next fight we're gonna preview, guys, is Josh Taylor versus Jack Cat Catero. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited for this one. You wanna you wanna continue with that one, Copa? Yeah. So you got Josh Taylor, Jack Catterall. This is an undisputed, uh, super lightweight title fight for all the belts, guys. Um, It's going to take place at the SSE Hydro in Glasgow, Scotland, United Kingdom. Also February 26, 2022. If you want to watch it, it's going to take place on ESPN Plus at 11 a.m. here uh, on California time. So like we always say, if you're in the East Coast, that's what, 2 p.m. over there. Uh, But here, 11 a.m., ESPN Plus. If you don't have a subscription, I think it's what, like $6.99 for the month. And you can always cancel it. So. You can pay seven bucks to watch a fight, and not just this fight, but obviously the undercards. And uh, it's seven bucks. Uh, you got Josh the Tartan Tornado Taylor, who's the undisputed super lightweight champion. He's eighteen and zero with thirteen KOs. Southpaw, five foot ten, age thirty one, from the United Kingdom. He's coming off a win uh, against Jose Carlos Ramirez. So what? A nine month layoff. I think that fight took place in May. He's beat the likes of Miguel Vasquez, Victor Postal, Ivan Baranchik, Regis Progre, and then obviously, like we mentioned, Jose Ramirez. And then he's facing his opponent, Jack Elgato Catterall, who's ranked number one by the WBO, number nine by the WBA, and number nine by the WBC. Also undefeated, he's 26-0 with 13 KOs, also southpaw, 5'7", so he has the high disadvantage there. He's only 28, though in the middle of his prime, from the UK as well. Last fought some dude named Abderraza Kuya, uh, which he won by points decision. Uh, when you went by points decision, guys, that means there was only one judge, only one judge scoring the fight, so that's why he won. Um, but he's coming off a 15-month layoff, and this is his first true test. He hasn't really faced a notable opponent until now. Now he's going to be facing uh, Josh Taylor, undefeated guy. What do you guys think? You know, this is a battle of the two UK yeah. fighters out in uh, Taylor's hometown of uh, home country of Scotland. I like I like how Jack's name is El Gato. <laughs> El Gato. <laughs> I El think Gato. They, El Gato because Catterall, because his first oh, his last name starts with Cat. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is pretty much, guys. This is pretty much he's fighting him because this is uh, Taylor's uh, WBO belt mandatory. So Jeez, he's got to get him out of there. I think, oh my God, I think, uh, I think for me, I think I'm going to go El Gato. You're going to go Catterall? Yeah. Hey, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Hell no. I'm going to go I'm gonna get... Josh Taylor. 
<laughs> he's on this feeder uh, for a reason. So I'm gonna go. Let's. I'm. I'm gonna go against it to see. Maybe. Maybe he comes in the win, dude. You never know. Because this he's, fight was supposed to happen. Yeah, this fight was supposed to happen when in December, right? But then it got mm. canceled. I think because uh, Taylor got like a knee injury or something. So who knows? That injury might not be fully healed. You need your legs in boxing, guys. To yeah. if you get hit by those bombs, that's what holds you up. Obviously, is you got to have some tree trunks of legs so to be able to hold you up. But like Quan said, to me, just Taylor's just unbeatable right now. He's in the middle of his prime. Oh, yeah. I don't see anybody at at super lightweight uh, that can challenge him. This might be Amen. the last. This might be the last fight he takes at one forty before he take uh, moves up to one forty seven. I think at 147 he'll make some noise, but I think at 147 he'll suffer his first loss. You know what? I think it, what I love about this that we preview is that I can take my my decision back. No, I think Josh Taylor. Okay. <laughs> you're going Josh. You're gonna go Josh Taylor. Yeah, no, screw that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I want right, to. I want to so get an, an up an up on you guys, but oh, I just can't. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. He he can't take it back because once the decision is no, made, no, that's no, it. no, no. You can't take well, it back the, until the, the recording is done. Yes. Once the recording is done, then then you you can't take it back. Just every listener out here, you guys have to remember, he yeah. only picked because he wants to pick it back off us. You know, he, that, he heard yeah, it. He right. was like, "Oh shit! Oh shit!" And, and it, imagine, imagine I got the win, dude. dude. <laughs> Fuck. He's so disappointed. <laughs> oh no, it sucked, man. But yeah, guys, the Bro. reason we're so like we're so like picky about our picks is because we keep a lead, leaderboard at um, after yeah. our picks. Uh, you know, for bragging rights, you know, we like to say yeah. we, we know what we're talking about. And so far, Juan is our leader in this. Uh, so uh, we're going to go over what? that at, at the end of the episode. What do you have there, Juan? Yeah. I, I, I don't see anything. I have a 10-1 lead. Ten it's, one a lead. Pimple. it's a pimple. <laughs> a pimple. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, crap. All right, guys. So let's move on to the to the next fight. We got Jerwin on Cajas versus Fernando Martinez. Uh, this is an IBF super flyweight, uh, for you guys that don't know what the flyweight division is, 115 title yeah. fight. It's going to take place in Las Vegas at the Chelsea, at the Cosmopolitan. So that's pretty cool. Vegas. Yeah. It's going to be televised on Showtime at 7 PM. Uh, so if you guys have Showtime or want to order Showtime, uh, order Showtime. So Jerwin, show, pretty, go, uh -huh. Gompa, Showtime is what? 15 bucks for the month. I think. Dude, I don't know actually. I think if yes, you've never are. signed up, I think it's like ten bucks. But if you're, uh, if you've used their free trial or whatever, it's like fifteen bucks. It's not, it's not too much. So if you want to watch some fights, that's what the cost is. So we got Jerwin Pretty Boy on Cajas. Um, he is the IBF Super Flyweight Champion. He's thirty-three, uh, one, one draw, two losses. No Copa, with one loss and chaos. two draws. Two draws. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, he's a southpaw. He's five six. He's H thirty. Uh, he's your age, Copa. He's from the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, he last he last fought uh, Jonathan Javier Rodriguez Valles, uh won by a unanimous decision on April April of two thousand twenty one. So he has a ten month layoff. And notable opponents is Macjo Arroyo, which he won again unanimous decision on September two thousand sixteen. And who do we have uh, him fighting, Juancho Fernando? Fernando Pumita Martinez. So, uh, number 11 IBF ranked 13 and 0 with eight uh, KOs, orthodox at 5'4 and age 30 um, from Argentina. Mm. Um, and his last fight was against Gonzalo Garcia Duran uh, by a fourth round TKO in August 2021. So, that's a six month layoff. Um, and the only notable fighter that season I have now is Jorwan Nakaja. So. so, this is a test for Tess and a good opportunity for. Pumita Martinez to uh, show what he's got. Who you guys got in yeah. this fight? Shit. Ricky, you want to pick first? Yeah, let's go. Uh, <laughs> let's... He wants to piggyback think... off you now, it seems like, compa. Uh... I know. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go with my, with my Filipinos here. I'm going to go with Jerome Pretty Boy. Pick. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I'm going to go with... Uh, oh, he's piggybacking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Guys... <laughs> Uh, I'm a go uh, the Argentino Pumita Martinez. I mean, he was Damn. an Oli he was an Olympian for a reason, undefeated so far. This is his first opportunity to test himself at a at a title shot. I think he can take it from Ancajas, man. Just based off Ancajas, 
beating uh, Rodriguez. Yeah, it was a unanimous decision win, but he didn't look that good to me. Um, I remember watching this fight at Ricky's place when it was, I think it was Joe Smith Jr. versus Vlasov. It was that undercard. Um, I don't know, man. And then not only that, yeah, uh, Ancajas is the champion, but look at, out of all the fights, he's fought 36 fights and he's only fought one notable opponent. Mm-hmm. I mean, that means, to me, that means his, his record is padded. I don't think he's, I know it seems like I'm just banging on, on Ancajas, but I think it's, it's Martinez's time to shine. And them Argentinos, you know, with Castaño being the first Argentino or only Argentino champion right now, I think Pumita Martinez will be the second. Hey, um, Argentina has going, produced great boxers, so. Yeah, I'm going for Pumita Martinez on this one. Pumita, okay. Dang. Okay. Yeah, that so looks we got... like Ricky's going to catch up to you. <laughs> 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 so we'll see, man. Hey, we'll see. You never know what happens, man. Uh, so, guys, we also have Victor Posto versus Gary Antoine Russell, one of the Russell brothers. Uh, yep. This is a super lightweight fight, uh, 140 pounds. It's also going to be taking place at the, at the Chelsea uh, yeah. At the Chelsea, at the Cosmopolitan of, the, of Las Vegas. That's part of the Undercard, same card, huh? I think. Yeah. Yeah. The under, it's, yeah, part of the same card. So we have Victor, the Iceman Postal. He is ranked by the WBC at number eight. He is 31 victories, three losses, and 12 KOs. He is orthodox. He's 5'11. He's age 38. He's up there. He's from yeah. Ukraine. Uh, and he actually, actually is local, compa. Uh, yeah. He lives in Marina del Rey, which is yep. like, what, an hour and something away from us? Yeah. Um, he last fought Jose Carlos Ramirez. He lost. Um, it, so that was back in August of 2020, which is an 18-month layoff. Yeah. So his notable opponents, we have De, Demarcus Corley. He won. Terrence Crawford, he lost. Josh Taylor, he lost. And Jose Carlos Ramirez, he also lost. Yeah. Uh, and we also have uh, Gary Antoine Russell. He's not ranked currently, guys. He is a southpaw. He's 5'10". Uh, he's 25, so he's way younger than the other guy. From Capitol Heights, Maryland. Uh, his last fight was Jovain Santiago. He won by a six round. Uh, yeah, the sixth round. And uh, it was uh, a that fight. Technical decision, I think. I think the oh, ref ended the fight, yeah. Oh, okay. So that happened back in May 2021. So that's like a nine month layoff. So yeah. um, his notable opponent is, well, it's uh, Victor Postal, who has last who lost champion in May 2015, Okoba? Yeah. So Gary Anton Russell, a young man hyped up, fourteen and zero, all wins by knockouts. This is a good. This is his first true test fight. Uh, you got yeah, uh, Postal's coming off an eight, 18 month layoff, older man, but look at the experience. Even though it's losses, he's been in with the best man, Jose Ramirez, yeah. Josh Taylor, and Terrence Crawford, um, and Demarcus Corley. So. This is kind of tough for me because it's like, do I go with the young guy who's he's not even ranked? Yeah, he's knocked everybody out, but he hasn't fought anybody like a Victor Postal yet. So mm-hmm. that's the thing. That's why this fight is here to see what he's got. Who, I don't know who, who do you, you got on this one, got. Mancho? I got Gary Anton Russell. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Kike? I'm going to go Gary Anton Russell as well. Yeah. I think, I, uh, think, I think the young guy. Now, the thing is... The thing is, uh, will he win by knockout, though? Because nobody's been able to knock out Postal. So Postal might end his knockout streak of 14-0, 14 KOs. Can yeah. Antoine Russell be the first one to uh, knock him out? We'll see. We're all Late going to knock out. I say like nine. Not well, even can, Terrence probably... Crawford could knock him out, dude. Or Jose Ramirez or Josh Taylor. Those are some big right. punchers, dude. Yeah. But that's why I'm Who saying knows? if Russ if Russell does not come out, that proves a point. Like, hey, I'm the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, I'm going Russell. Um, so we'll see what happens, yeah. and uh, we'll see who who gets a dub or who gets a loss, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Juancho, you want to uh, cover the next uh, uh, ex McDonald's employee? <laughs> yeah. So you you got Lawrence Oakley versus Michael Cislag, uh WBO. Who's a weight 200 pounds title fight um, that will happen in the O2 arena um, in Greenwich, London, um, United Kingdom. This will be taking place February 27th uh, on the zone at 9 a.m. So it's going to be early here for us in Pacific time. Um, so you got Lawrence the Sauce Oakley, <laughs> former uh, M- McDonald's uh, employee. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
WBA cruiserweight champion now. Uh, WBO. He is seventeen and zero with fourteen. Oh, WBO. Sorry, yeah. uh, seventeen and zero with fourteen KOs. Orthodox six five at Jeez. age twenty nine. Huge. Uh, yeah. From the United Kingdom, his last uh, fight was against uh, Dalian uh, Prasovic, which he won in the third round as a KO. Uh, with this is his what fifth five month layoff. Yeah, he's since, coming off a of five uh, month then. layoff. Um, a notable fighter, which is some weird ass name that doesn't even <laughs> look like a name. Christoph Glowacki. <laughs> uh, see, there you go. So you got Kike, international known <laughs> name uh. <laughs> guy. Uh, versus uh, Michael Cieslag, the number two WBA, WBO ranked 21 and 1 with 15 KOs, Orthodox at 6'3 and H32 from Poland. Uh, uh, H32 and uh, Poland. He, uh, his last Ooh. fight was uh, against Kike. You want to go ahead and do that name? Uh, Yuri Kaczynski. He won by first round TKO back in May. So yeah. he's coming off a nine month layoff. And his, and his notable, notable fighters are. Go for it, Ilanga go. Jr. and Makawu, and then uh, now Lawrence Oakley. So, so he's I'm going Oakley. Oakley. The sauce. I'm going the sauce, man. I'm going the sauce, hey, too, wins, man. If he wins, you have to go buy some McDonald's for him. <laughs> <laughs> this fight, uh, guys, is going to... This fight's going to take place on a Sunday, guys. I know that's not typical of it's boxing weird. events. It's going to take place this Sunday. Um... Most fights, like we say, happen on Saturdays, sometimes on Fridays. Very rarely do you see Sunday fights, but um, this is one of those Sunday fights that's going to take place. Um, yeah, man, I'm going the sauce. He's a big freaking dude He's for cruiserweight dude. dude. He's made mention of moving up to heavyweight one day, so we'll see if he moves up to heavyweight after this or if he's still going to try to unify. This is pretty much one of his mandatories. Because I think the number one spot is vacated for the WBO, which I don't know why, but uh, the next best guy is uh, Cizlac. So we've seen Cizlac. Yeah. These are those guys that put the promotions or like paint the promotions on their back. So I don't know oh, if the zone's yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think the zone's gonna let him do that. So we'll see. <laughs> so here, man, I doubt, you gotta. Yeah, I, yeah, go, I doubt go the zone's on, gonna. I doubt the zone's gonna let him like paint on himself to promote. But hey, talk, we'll talking see. about marketing and money, he's a good example yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, guys, so when I started paint, paint boxing talk, in the back. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, uh, guys, uh, that wraps up episode fifty-two of Boxing Talk. Like always, guys, thank you guys so much for you know hanging in there with us, and we can't wait to show you guys how we're gonna record next week for Saturday yeah. when we're out there in Pomona, uh, yeah. watching the Ashton Sills uh, fight. So. Uh, uh, just stay tuned on that. We'll update you on Instagram, Twitter, and um, there's going to be a YouTube video for sure. So yeah, uh, I'm excited for that, guys. Uh, you guys, we're gonna do it say? like uh, we're gonna try to do like a vlog style, guys. Yeah. I mean, me and Ricky, we're older guys. We don't know how to do this kind of crap, but maybe Juan could teach us something in that sense. We're not used to guys yep. holding our cameras in front of us and recording ourselves so it's gonna be something new but we'll see how it goes like like no joke guys like this youtube for me is like i never <laughs> thought of, i i don't like being in front of the camera yeah. so it's like totally new for me so yeah. we're, we're learning as we go but yeah. i'm excited i'm excited this, this should open open up you know more more things for you guys if you guys yeah. do, you know some people are visual yeah. like to have visuals and youtube is a perfect platform for that yeah so what about you want you want to say no, that's else? why that's why I'm the outreach guy here in the group. Uh, we get the shout outs because, you know, my <laughs> ways. No, just kidding. Uh, oh, but, you know. Go ahead, Ricky. I don't know. No, go ahead. Sorry, Juancho. Yeah. So, I mean, thank you guys for supporting us. And uh, once again, follow us, uh, us on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, and then every podcast uh, platform out there that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, you can always look us up at Boxing Talk on any of uh, uh itunes or whatever you hear podcast um servers and then on instagram we're at boxing talk podcast mm -hmm. and then on um twitter we're at boxing boxing talk pod um so go ahead and follow us there um besides that i don't know if you guys have anything else to add guys keep tuning in this is the boxing podcast to get all your news we give you all the up-to-date stuff all the top fighters Guys, we know our stuff, or at least we try to know. We do, we, you know, we appreciate those guys that, you know, give us shout out that, you know, they tell us you can tell you guys do your research and work hard to know that we do that here. Um, 
I just want to give a quick shout out to Cole, our producer, who oh, got I was going to mention him. Yeah, to, cool. that got us uh, some lapel mics for our event on uh, on Saturday. We're excited, guys. Keep tuning in. And then lastly, our leaderboard. I have to talk about our leaderboard. So because of this last weekend's fights, that Juan's still at I, number one. I did it on purpose. <laughs> Juan's still at number one. Out of 11 fights that we've previewed, he's got a 10-1 and record. So he's only been incorrect once. Good job, Juan. Um, I've got a record of 8-3. and three, And then Ricky's got a record of 6-5. and five. So that can always change. It could change this week because we've only disagreed on one fight, I think. It was the Ancajas Martinez all the other fights yeah um i think all the other fights we picked the same so there's only gonna be one one difference there um either i can move up on juan or ricky will move up on me we'll see uh but thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see how this youtube thing uh works out. yeah and and and, and again i know i mentioned it last you know keep be patient with those guys. I know last time it was Enrique with the, a, a lagging internet. Today is Juan. So, so we, we got to figure it out, man. Yeah. No, no, no. On my end, it showed like you guys disappeared at one point. I was yeah. like, what the? It's what? Like, no, you recording. disappeared on us. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, we'll you, you, you were gone. It's yeah. just still so, yeah, guys. It's still come out good, though. Stay tuned, guys. Always a pleasure uh, bringing you this podcast. And see you next, next time. See you guys. Bye. Bye.